My name is Esther Luarem Lekonde Kule. I am a Nigerian and I come from the rural community that I labo. I'm honored to serve as a member of Students Leaders Advisory Council at Teach for All. Additionally, I co founded the Community Tech Club, which is dedicated to providing access to digital skills and empowering students in my community with the 21st century life skills. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Lul Girma. I'm based here in Kenya from uh, Gabea Inc., uh, originally from Ethiopia. Uh, Gabea Inc., Gabea is in, uh, in Amharic, Ethiopia language, it means a marketplace. What we do is we have a software as a service, SaaS enabled talent marketplace, where it, it focuses on African youth, African tech talents mainly, uh, which is now open to expand. And what we do is we, we train, nurture, and make them ready for the global uh, workforce. So our marketplace actually connects them to a global employers, projects, and things like that. Uh, and uh, so far, we've been successful in having our footprint in 32 plus countries in Africa in terms of uh, bringing in these young talents uh, to make them ready for the future of work. My name is Mujeni Aseli. I am the Marketing and Partnerships Director at Junior Achievement Africa. Junior Achievement is a global um, NGO and leading organizations, organization in the place of youth empowerment. At Junior Achievement, we believe in the boundless potential of young people. And we really believe we have to come together, partner together, and empower them in the space of entrepreneurship, in the space of work readiness, in the space of financial literacy, and that's the only way that we will be able to have true future leaders. Thank you. So I am Sylvia Mwangi. I work with Educate Kenya. At Educate, we build skills amongst the youth. We are, we are a believer that the answer to Africa, the development in Africa lies amongst the youth. And so we work to ensure that we are preparing the youth that are leaving our schools um, with and by equipping them with the relevant skills that will help them to thrive in the, our current economy, um, not just here in Kenya, but we are in three other African countries, that is um, Uganda, Rwanda, and recently in Tanzania. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Valal Wigert. I am the Senior Director of Career Programs at African Leadership Academy. For those of you who saw the discussion this morning, Fred Swanika is the CEO of the African Leadership Group and ALA was the original organization that was founded. We look to, we, we search Africa looking for the next generation of young African leaders. We were started in 2008, um, and to date we have over 1,600 alumni across the world. Um, my role specifically looks at how we continue the relationship with the students once they leave ALA, making sure that they have successful transitions from the school into tertiary, from tertiary into work, and then whatever transitions they might choose to have throughout the rest of their careers. Thank you very much. I mean, you can see we have a pretty mm -hmm. cross board, uh, uh, you know, around the sector of enabling learners and getting them ready for work. And so um, I'm going to ask uh, each one of the panelists to describe the starting point uh, as they engage learners as you engage learners in your program, um, what do you find are the skills they possessed? What, what do you find their mindset to be um, before you even start working with them? So maybe I could start with you, Val. Certainly. I think the thing that we look for most is leadership potential. So we work with a group of partners across the continent who actually are seeing these youth working in the various spaces that they are in, whether it be in schools or refugee camps or just whatever environment they might be in. So they must show leadership potential. We do like to show, have academic excellence, but it's not a strict requirement in terms of what um, we do at the academy. What we really want is someone who's entrepreneurial thinking, someone who's innovative, and someone who's thinking about global problems or community problems. So they must have a social awareness and be thinking about the challenges that are happening in their environment already. Many of the youth who come to, our, come to ALA already are running their own organizations 
or are participating in community projects. So it's quite remarkable just to see some of the work that they are doing. We really want them to be open to global diversity, thinking about what different cultures look like, think about how they can behave or engage with different types of um, diverse people from different cultures, religions, etc. And we really want them to have character and integrity. We can't have leaders in the future who, aren't integ who do not have integrity. So that is a key requirement. And then, of course, communication, something quite important. We always want them to be able to communicate well. We have multiple languages at the, at the multiple different students speaking different languages at the academy, but they all, by the time they leave, have studied writing and rhetoric quite um, quite extensively. And I think generally just an adaptive, adaptive, being adaptive and being resilient. Um, many of them might have come from disadvantaged backgrounds where they've had to overcome res some challenges. And so you see when they come to the school, they are then able to um, thrive in that environment. And do you, uh, do you find that when they come to ALA, they already have those quality? Or is this something you work at, uh, at with them? Many of them already have those qualities. Uh, we get around 3,000 applicants a year. We take about 130 per year. So you can understand that the kids who are, who are chosen for the academy are already exhibiting many of those characteristics. All right, thank you. Uh, Sylvia, do you, do you find that uh, the, the students that you engage uh, in the countries that you operate in uh, to have the same quality or profile that uh, are similar to, the, to those that uh, attend ALA? For us, our client or our target uh, is the in-school learner, the high schooler who is yet to develop most of these skills. Uh, for us, we do not select. When we go to a school, we will, we will work with the learners that we find in that school. Uh, and therefore, for us, our intervention is through curricula, um, subject areas through which we, thrive, we drive um, leadership skills. We require them to now start building these skills. Um, the baseline or the common denominator is that they are all coming from a common background. Um, a lot of times, um, typical of Africa, we have got children who have almost been made to believe that they are not able to do it. So for us, the mindset that we want them to have is that as they are interacting with the learning programs, then they are able to shift their mindset. They are able to change their thinking and start building the skills that will help them thrive once they are out of school. So for us, we are now introducing them to this new way of thinking that requires them to prepare to build skills that will help them thrive. All right, thank you very much. But let me just double down on that. When you start, what would, what would you say is the, their profile? Where are they along the lines of what you just described? Um, timidity is uh, something that is there, but beneath it is a resilience. It just requires somebody who believes in them and, and walks them the journey of believing in themselves, and they are able to grow and adapt to the new skills that they are being introduced to. Thank you. Uh, Mujeni, I know that... Uh, your organization um, operates in multiple, a lot of countries. Um, and I, I'm curious, uh, what's the profile of the students that come into your program, um, or learners in general that come into your program? And do you see a difference between, let's say, learners uh, in Africa versus learners in other countries outside Africa? Uh, thank you, Joseph. So at Junior Achievement Africa, we don't have an institution, but we work with corporate organizations. We take our programs to where the youth are, and we work with a strategy that I call DIE, <laughs> D-I-E, uh, D for diversity, then inclusion, and equity. It doesn't matter where these youth come from. They come from a type of a culture or background or whether it's religion or whatever it is, we do not discriminate. So wherever, whatever level we find them in, we still believe that these young people, regardless of where they come from, they have the potential to grow. They have the potential to change. And it's up to us to really inculcate in them the right skill set and the right mindset that can actually help them to compete at a global level. 
regardless of which country they come from. If I can just give an example, uh, Joseph, one of the programs we run is the company program. 12 to 14 weeks, we teach these students an entrepreneurship class that includes design thinking, proposal writing, communication, pitching, how do you fundraise, the full business concept. And out after the 16-week uh, program, we challenge them to come up with a different, so what problems are they facing in the countries that they are in? And what solutions can they come up with to address those problems? So through this program, they come up with amazing business um, ideas and they get to compete at a zonal level, then national, then regional level, all the way to global. And I'm happy to report that our team from Zimbabwe, Africa, won the global competition against six continents worldwide, just to show that it's the right skill set that needed to be inculcated. Thank you. Right. Well, thank you. That, that is encouraging. Um, so, and, and that's how it should be. So that's, that's good. That's good to hear. Um, well, I know that uh, for your organization, you are, you are really getting young people ready for work directly. That means you have this program, they undergo this program, and they are ready for work. Um, when you establish this training or these programs, you must, you must start with some sort of a profile of where they are starting from. Can you describe that profile for us? Can you hear me now? Oh, okay, perfect. So yeah, ours... Uh, at Gebea, it's, it's a little bit unique because, first of all, we focus on technology, software development trainings. But it doesn't mean that we're only looking for people who understand software development. So the starting point, um, we have two kind of categories, what we call like uh, non-software development. That means people who've graduated or they're in college, second year, third year, uh, of, let's say, business administration or something related and they have some sort of uh, knowledge on, the, on anything like business administration so that they can be, you know, we can bring them up to some level of software development skills. The other ones are definitely the ones who graduated from universities in software development uh, or uh, management information system, something related. But now what we do is we, first of all, not only look at their profile or their transcript, but we put them on a test. So we have different kind of tests from very junior tests to a little bit of, uh, I would say, intermediate kind of test to kind of see where they are and if they can actually fit into our program because our program can take them from zero to one in six months. What we do is we make them job ready, uh, which I'll talk about it later, but that is one thing we're looking at. And the second thing, the soft skills. We test them on things like, um, uh, aptitude, uh, language, communication, because we know that just coding is not the only solution for them to get a job or to get to the next level. They need to know how to communicate, they need to have all the soft skills, so we make sure that they have the right attitude before they come to the program. At the end of the day, we can give them the technical skill, but they need to make sure they take that home and take it to you know the next level, uh, because it's not a four years program or a two years program we're giving them. I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you very much. Um, so we are lucky enough to have Esther with us. We've been describing students or learners uh, that she represents. So Esther, from the description you heard, or, or from your own experience when you set up the, uh, the, the, the center, um, would you say the description that you heard is accurate, or can you add to a little bit of that profile of you or other students that you represent? Um, thank you for that question. I would agree that they give an, they all give an accurate description. You know, in my own community, only 20% of students have that, that kind of skills. And in the last two years, I've been a midst of the 80% that do not have that kind of skills. But you know, in this community, the we are, we need to teach um, the students. It's not that 
we test them and leave them that they do not have these skills, they do not have access to this opportunity. But we, the teacher or yes, the teacher needs to, you know, teach them, introduce them to the skills they need. And I would accept to it uh, well with a description because when I applied for the African Leadership Academic, I make it to the final stage, but I do not I do not I was not later picked. So I was wondering that is it because of my communication skills and I think I must work on my communication skills. You know, I'm out of secondary school education, but the following year I did not apply for any university or undergraduate undergraduate scholarship. I, I just focus on the community tech lab that yes, this is leadership skills. I'm, I must um you know I must have these skills to enter any undergraduate scholarship and. Thanks, Esther. Um, yes, please. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. I think that the fact that you might not have gotten into the program probably is, is just indicative of just how competitive it is and how many few spots they have compared to the to the application. Uh, but that just shows the quality that's out there. So, I mean, I think that we kind of discussed a little bit about the profile of the students as they enter into these programs. Um, and, and it seems like, depending on the program, that profile is a bit different. Um, however, after they go through these programs, the aim is to get them future ready, is to get them uh, to become employable, is to get them to be ready for tertiary education. Um, so I, I wonder if, you, if I can ask uh, the panelists to reflect on what is that desired state? In our context, uh, we give definitely emphasis on their technical skills because if you're going to compete in the global stage, you have to be, you know, uh, you need to have those unique skills. You need to be good at what you do. Plus, as I said, to be future ready, you must have, you know, my, I always give communication skill as the number one skill students should have from university, high school, even in our programs. Because if you don't have communication skill, communication skill, wherever you go, at the end of the day, you're not able to pass the knowledge you have or communicate, so uh, that's gonna be challenging. So we definitely look at the, the skills and the soft skill side, communication, leadership, and other things. But on the technical side, what we're looking at as a, as a trend right now is, uh, Students who do not pursue, even after our uh, program, an AI or machine learning, things like that, these are now the future, right? Anything we do right now is moving into artificial intelligence or machine learning. So those are the skills right now that are, that are needed. So even though we're not currently training, but those are the things we plan to do, because whoever has those AI, machine learning, things kind of, the soft skills I talked about, definitely can take you to the next level. So that's what we look at in our, what we call our tech talents. Mujeni, if you can, you know, you told us about the Zimbabwe team that won, which is great. Um, can you give us a profile of a student after they graduate or after they complete the training that you provide them? Through the programs that we teach, we teach um, the curriculum is very rich. Leadership, um, communication, uh, resilience, um, critical thinking, networking, all these other skills that you need, um, that you will not be taught in school. You know, it's all exciting to learn biology, physics, you know, logarithms and all that. But after you look at all this anthropology and great things we learn, at the end of the day, you ask yourselves, how do I apply this to real life? How does maths double squared give me a job or make me a great CEO in an organization? So there are those skills that we need to put into our programs beyond what they learn in the normal curriculum, like the ones I have uh, highlighted, that will help them to be able to be future ready and to be able also to be very competitive in a global setup. I would also want to add entrepreneurial mindset. Just having an entrepreneurship mindset is very key. Uh, I don't know how the statistics are for different um, continents, but back home here in Africa, 
Africa graduates 11 million students annually. And out of the 11 million, only 3 million will get white collar jobs. So what happens to the 8 million that cannot, they went to school, they studied, they graduated, but they cannot have jobs. But with that entrepreneurial mindset, you learn that you not only look at getting a job, but you are looking at a situation where you can create jobs for other people, you can create employment for your com uh, community, and you can also, um, and even for those who go into employment, those with an entrepreneurial mindset make better CEOs because uh, look at situations where we wake up one morning, COVID happens, everything shut down. But there are those who became billionaires in that situation because they started thinking, critical thinking. This situation I'm in, how do I turn it? How do I turn things around so that I'm able to move to the next level? We also have a, a blend of both hard skills, um, hard skills and soft skills. Um, the soft skills that will help them navigate the world as it is. And so we're talking about the learners believing in themselves. We're talking about learners being critical thinkers, learners who can be able to, to harness opportunities as they come their ways. One of the things that we also look at is uh, building resilient skills amongst the learners. And as Mujeni has said, Africa is, um, it has been taught that by 2035, Africa will be releasing the largest workforce into the world. Over 50% of the workforce uh, will be coming from Africa. And therefore, that begs the question, what type of uh, skills are we giving them? The other thing that we also ensure is that we are preparing them for the reality that white-collar job, jobs are not available to everyone. And so our intervention at Educate, we talk about single-subject intervention, where we, we build skills through a single subject. And one of the things that we are doing, especially in Rwanda and in Uganda, is building entrepreneurship skills, where at the end of the day, looking at the content they are getting from the other learning areas, they are able to use this knowledge to come up with an, an entrepreneurial idea that they can be able to start. And during their period in school, they are given the support that, is there, that they required. Um, while at it, we have got opportunities for them to run business clubs in school. Um, and in some of the schools you, get, you will visit where learners have actually come up with a product, their marketing, and they are able to sell. So the skills that we, we blend both hard skills and soft skills so that they are able to navigate the, um, the world, um, the future world, of, uh, and be ready for the world of work. Um, so the students who come to ALA, you must realize they all arrive and they've all been shining stars in their spaces. And suddenly they're thrust into an environment of other shining stars from different backgrounds, different cultures, different religions, and then they have to learn what it's like to be shine in that environment. And so you find these students are then taught how to build their own businesses. Our entire campus runs like a business. Everyone has their own small business. Um, they are taught resilience. We have a huge focus now on well-being and mental health. As you know, many of our youngsters have been really struggling since COVID. So this is something now that we are really focusing on going forward. How do our youngsters cope in the world of work going forward? There are so many challenges. And as we mentioned this morning, you know, there are jobs out there that haven't yet. We don't even know what they are yet. So how do we prepare them for that? So like many of, the, many of my fellow panelists have said, you know, the innovative mindset, the thinking ahead, problem solving. We really try and focus them on what are, what are the problems you're trying to solve? What is your personal mission? And what does that look like as the world is changing? And I think that is, the, all of the students come out of there having written their personal missions, being very clear on what they want to go out and do in the world. My team then takes over that relationship and we help them achieve some of those outcomes. Our work is very sector focused. We've looked at what the biggest challenges are facing Africa and how we can turn those challenges into opportunities. So we connect them to networks of education, health, agribusiness, governance, the arts, and infrastructure. And how does your career or would your future look like in any one of those spaces? As much mentorship and guidance as they need. And then last but not least, really thinking about how they can navigate the world of diversity. 
diversity, equity, and inclusion, as you mentioned, but if you think about what is happening in the world right now, the challenges, the conflict resolution that they need to deal with, we really try and build those, those skills as much as possible. Because they're in a campus of so many different people from different environments, 46 different countries being represented, they really have to learn how to deal with diversity. And that will be something that will be important in their futures. These skills and these uh, mindsets that you instill in the learners at ALA, um, I wonder, does your program, or, or how are you thinking about sharing this in the you know, upstream? So, so for example, the students that you're getting are coming from different countries and different schools. Are you sharing this with those schools so that when they come to you, they already have some of that? So what we do is we actually have different programs that we run in the academy. For example, when I talk about the sector work, we actually have an educational accelerator for schools. Many of our students have gone out and started their own schools, and then we help them train and build those schools in the same way that you would build entrepreneurs. We are doing that kind of accelerated environment for education to think about what, they, what their presence looks like. The core subjects are African studies and entrepreneurial leadership. Writing and rhetoric are built into those, those two subjects as well. So everything that they do is focused around a similar um, uh, area of, of focus, and that's what they concentrate in the two years that they're there. Um, and then they can go out there and do what they need to do with those skills going forward. You, you heard the description of the desired skills and mindset. And, and earlier you'd mentioned something about communications. Um, do, do those skills and the mindset, do they resonate with you? And are you seeing this in the other students that you work with? You know, to start working with these students, you need to know their weakness, their strengths, what they can do, their limits, on, uh, on the, based on their knowledge, how far they can read and how. I think that communication skills is very important. And if they have that communication skills, it can at least, it's part of the um, skills leader needs to develop. Because me, I'm also working on my communication. I know it will be better one day. So I agree with them. Thank you very much. No, it's really good. Uh, you know, uh, you say it would be better that way. And actually, I don't see the shyness that Sylvia mentioned uh, in, uh, in some of the learners that I saw today. The young lady, 12-year-old, who was uh, emceeing, uh, Esther here and others. So, you know, we, we, we definitely have uh, some bright uh, stars among us. Um, so for the last question of the panel, I wanted to just get an idea. Uh, are you working with schools, teachers, to ensure that the programs that you have or the skills you're building in these, in these learners are, are actually uh, also being, uh, being incorporated into the system as a whole? So maybe we can start with you, Lord. Specifically, uh, I wouldn't say we, we work with like schools, but in our academy, we work with a lot of uh, instructors coming from different schools uh, to help us in different programs. So we make sure that our curriculum uh, is what they actually go with. So we ensure that they also understand the value of what we're trying to achieve. And there is something I liked uh, from what my fellow panelists said about entrepreneurship. Uh, we always say eight out of 10 uh, technology students wanna be uh, even if they don't become, but they want to be entrepreneurs. So that is what we want to uh, we want to put in, or we want to plant in a seed, so that when they come out of these programs, they also have that entrepreneurship mindset. So we, all our instructors who come in to help us, definitely they will go with that attitude, uh, even though we actually don't go to institutions to uh, work with our curriculum. But that is what we do with all the instructors who come to work with us. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, Mujeni, are you, do you work with teachers in schools? Yes, we do. Uh, so uh, teachers are our best friends uh, because they are volunteers. They normally volunteer to do our programs. So the way we partner with government and schools, for example, 
We will go to this school. They already have their curriculum and what they are learning from eight to five. They already have even a, a club. Maybe they call it a young farmers or environmental club or uh, something extracurricular that they do with the students. But a number of those teachers, they have the students, they have that space, but they don't know what to do with it. So we give them that curriculum. First, we train them. And uh, after we've trained them and given them our program, they then become our trainers because they in turn train the students. But beyond that, they also become mentors who then teach them um, and also mentor them and support them in different aspects to help them to be successful in the program. At Educate, our work model is that we work with government. Um, and so our primary beneficiary is the learner in school. And so we work, for example, with the Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development here in Kenya. And uh, in Tanzania, the Tanzania Institute of Education, Rwanda Education Board, to incorporate this knowledge into the curriculum process. Right here in Kenya, we are in the process of reforming our education. And one of the objectives of the, our reform process is that we want to have learners that are independent and that, that can employ themselves. So we work directly. Once KICD has, that's the curriculum institute, has developed the curriculum, that curriculum is handed down to the teachers who implement the activities therein. And to ensure that these skills or whatever knowledge is uh, passed on to the learners, they align themselves to the specific learning outcomes that focus on building certain skills, certain qualities in the learners. And there are also suggested activities that help the teachers to inculcate this knowledge in the learner. So we work, we work very closely with the teachers. We particularly encourage that all these programs right, are also reaching back into the schools, working with teachers so that we have a systemic change. Um, and I think that uh, from, from what we heard from all the panelists, uh, that's happening at every, uh, at every program.